Hello guys, uh, welcome to our next video in the playlist Google Earth Engine for the beginners as well as Google Earth Engine for the uh, land cover application. So, so in today's video, uh, we are going to look at how we can see the ocean surface temperature, how it has changed over the time, uh, what's the data set uh, which is uh, used and how we can visualize them. So, uh, let's uh, start our tutorial uh, by importing our data set. So, we can just uh, go to the Google Earth Engine search data catalog and search and search uh, ocean uh, or uh, sea surface temperature yeah here we have uh, sea surface temperature uh, version 3 so this is the particular data set from uh, the JAXA uh, uh, Japan Space Agency uh, so it has a uh, uh, data latency for three to four days it means uh, it releases the da data it releases uh, uh, the data set uh, for every uh, once in uh, three to four days so also uh, we we come to the bands which has a resolution of uh, 4000 meters uh, nearly the four kilometers uh, 4.5 kilometers is the uh, spatial resolution of the data set so almost all climate data set will have this kind of uh, uh, spatial resolution only uh, because uh, those will be graded one so if you come to the bands here we have sea surface temperature uh, temperature average so here you will find the temperature of a sea surface so it ranges from 0 to uh, 65531 uh, it is in a degree celsius so again we need to scale these values uh, in order to bring them uh, to uh, a particular uh, meaningful uh, values so these two uh, quality flag uh, bit mask uh, bands are not of our use so we just want the first band uh, sea surface temperature average and additionally if you come to the image properties we have the satellite direction uh, the satellite orbit direction uh, from nighttime data as well as the daytime data so similar to the ones we have looked in the previous video uh, that is uh, the land surface temperature so uh, let's uh, import this and uh, see how we can uh, filter it down and how we can visualize through the entire globe so let's start uh, we can rename the image collection as uh, sea surface temperature and uh, you can create a variable uh, called uh, daytime temperature or simply the day temperature uh, is equal to from our sea surface temperature we can filter it down to date so i'm uh, creating for 2024 january or you can also go for 2025 january let's go to the latest and uh, here also you can give 2025 to one so why i'm using uh 2025 second february is that uh because uh the data sets uh, uh the date which we have filtered uh is uh, exclusive uh for the second date range it means uh, whatever the date you have given uh in the second range will not be included the day before this will be included so that the th 31st of january uh, is included not uh the first february so in order to confirm you can print the date and temperature and to know how many image collections are available uh for uh, this particular filter so here yeah for the 31 date we have 62 image collection so similar to what we have found in the previous video for the land surface temperature uh we have uh, two bands uh, uh surface average uh, temp cc surface average temperature as well as for a single date here you can see for the first january of 2025 we have the two images a and d where d stands for daytime and a stands for nighttime so now uh, let's filter it down uh, to have only the daytime temperature so we can use the function dot filter and the ee dot uh, filter uh, dot equal to so if you come to the data set again and go to the image properties and select the satellite direction property and uh, paste it down here and uh, filter it down to D because we are using for daytime. So now let's just print this. So we have some error in here. Yeah, uh, one space was there, so I have to remove that space. And uh, now we have the 31 elements for the 31 days of January. 
uh, all having the two bands uh, what that we will filter it down and uh, for one single day for the first january 2025 we have only one band uh, starting uh, with the prefix uh, not the prefix the uh, suffix with the d so it means uh, these are the daytime bands so now we need to uh, filter it down to select uh, the band of our interest so you can just select and uh, again you go to this data set uh, and uh, go come to the bands and select this band name and just paste it in here so we have the sea surface temperature average band selected now if you click on the run we have print day temperature variable which has 31 elements with a single band so now our filtering is done let's take mean temperature of this and uh, remove this print layer now we have a single image for the daytime temperature of average uh, daytime sea surface temperature for the month of january 2025 so now we need to uh, do the scaling uh, with the help of a uh, uh, slope coefficient as well as uh, we need to add uh, minus 10 in order to have a uh, multiple uh, mul we, we need in order to have a uh, meaningful uh, data so here you find uh, uh, with the core snippet which is given by uh, the official data itself so if we just scroll it down here we have the data set which we have filtered down uh, we need to multiply 0 0.0012 as well as add minus 10 so that uh, we can multiply with it uh, the slope coefficient and we are adding the offset also so remember to multiply with 0 0.0012 and add minus 10 so now uh, you create a <coughs> variable uh, or else uh, you can just uh, do it here itself you can just multiply with 0 0.0012 and uh, add minus 10 that's it guys our daytime temperature for the month of january 2025 is ready so let's add this to our map in order to know how does it look over the globe so remember we have not filtered down to any boundary we have not clipped it down to any of the geometry uh, we are visualizing this for the entire globe so map dot add layer daytime temperature and uh, we need the visualization parameters uh, so again if you take this uh, it's a good palette so just copy this the palette and the values we will uh, later we can modify this so you just create one more variable called palette and uh, paste this so now we need to specify uh, what are all the minimum and maximum required values for uh, visualizing the daytime as well as the nighttime temperatures so you give the palette name to be palette itself because we have defined the palette in the uh, upper right corner so now you can rename this as uh, uh, daytime sea surface temperature and click on the run so it's just daytime not daytime yeah so you can switch to satellite mode if you want and you can uncheck the labels so here you can get uh, a beautiful uh, visualization for uh, the sea surface temperature so if you can just uh, expand this here you are getting uh, near the equator uh, the temperatures are usually high and uh, as we go towards the pole the sea surface temperature during the daytime is relatively low so whatever you see in the blue color and whatever you see in the red to orange or yellow uh, everything is having the high ocean or the sea surface temperature so if you can just uh, go to the settings and uh, in the layers panel you just uh, extract the stretch uh, the data value from uh, minus 3 to 32 so this is what you get so it's a, a beautiful data set uh, with a good uh, uh, beautiful visualization so as you can see the arctic region uh, has uh, 
no data uh, because it's a completely frozen one so only you can find near the south south uh, regions north and near the equator uh, you can have uh, the uh, temperature data sets so similarly let's visualize for the nighttime temperature so let's uh, comment nighttime uh, temperature for the sea and uh, you can just uh, copy paste this daytime temperature in order to uh, easily visualize your data sets so you can just paste it down here and uh, you just rename the variable to be night temperature and uh, here everything remains the same we need the uh, data set uh, for the month of january 2025 only but in while filtering down the satellite direction image property you need to switch from d to a so that we have the nighttime data set and uh, relatively uh, we were selecting uh, the sea surface temperature average uh, band and uh, we are getting the average uh, mean uh, for the month of january uh, for the entire month we are getting only a single value and uh, for uh, and again we need to multiply with 0 0.0012 as well as add minus 10 in order to have the slope coefficient and uh, add the offset so after all this uh, now we need to visualize this so here you can see uh, this should be night sea surface temperature and this should also be renamed as night temperature so that's it guys just click on the run we'll have two layers now one is for daytime sea surface temperature another one is for nighttime sea surface temperature yeah we'll have two data set nighttime and daytime so you just come to the inspector column and click anywhere uh, on the map tab so you will get the daytime sea surface temperature 26 and nighttime is also similar 26 so more or less it is uh, similar because uh, the water uh, heats up very uh, quickly and loses the heat also very uh, slowly so if you just click on uh, some of the north latitudes so here you find uh, the night time temperature is masked so here you will find the similar values uh, for night as well as the day surface temperature so i hope you guys you have understood how we can uh, visualize uh, as well as uh, get to know the data set about uh, the day time as well as the night time sea surface uh, temperature from the global change observation mission so it is one of the mission from the jaxa uh, the japanese space agency and uh, we have a very good uh, data set uh, with a single band available in terms of degree celsius with a 4.5 kilometer spatial resolution and remember to filter it uh, the satellite direction to nighttime as well as the daytime in order to have a separate uh, visualization for both of this so uh, additionally you need also to multiply the slope coefficient of 0 0.0012 and add the offset of minus 10 so it's uh, always better to go for the a changing data catalog uh, for the official uh, course snippet so only if you have any kind of thoughts so i hope uh, you have understood how to do this uh, and i will also provide the code link uh, in the description box so always you can access it and if you have any kind of queries or doubts you can always post it in the comment section uh, thank you for watching